welcome to this latest episode of the JMSE's hit new podcast, Journalists in Chairs, Drinking Wine. I'm delighted to have with us today Darren Long. Darren is the creative director of the SCMP Group, publishers of the South China Morning Post. Darren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to the wine. <laughs> well, this is, this is why we have the wine here. It certainly is an added incentive for our guests to come into our studio <laughs> and chat with us. And I've, I've selected today a, a Barolo uh, from Italy. It's, it seemed appropriate to somehow show solidarity with Italy. Uh, as we're filming this today, <laughs> uh, the entire country of Italy went into lockdown. Uh, so I've chosen uh, this Barolo, which turns out is Darren's favorite. You were telling Absolutely, me earlier. So yes. that's, that's, it was a good choice, clearly. It was a very good choice, and I'm glad it was bottled before coronavirus started. It is. And it, so. It's from Piedmont, as you will know, so it's not in, in the Veneto region where the, the center of the outbreak is. So I think, I think we're pretty safe uh, drinking this wine. Um, I, I think the guests should taste the wine before we get too much into the interview, because if the wine's no good, well, the inter it's interview's not going to be any good. It's a lovely color. Look at that. Beautiful. So clear. Good nose? Good nose, all right. Oh, it's heaven. Excellent. All right. That well, then, so then well, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Let me uh, let me chop you up, and I'll fill some wow. uh, for me. Good. Good. So, I mean, Darren, creative director is probably a title that a lot of our viewers and a lot of journalists might not fully understand. I mean, how would you define what you do? Um, I think every organization uses the term uh, for, with a different meaning. Uh, at SCMP, my role is the bridge between uh, the, the graphics, uh, the design, the visuals, and the words. So um, I kind of sit in both camps and, and um, speak the same language as both sides. Um, which, uh, is, uh, yeah, I say speak the same language. With, uh, it's interesting because my team is, there's lots of Spanish speakers. Um, so that, that, yeah, it's literally the same language and also figuratively speaking the same language. But is, is, do journalists speak in the same language or do the reporters speak in the same language as the, as the creatives? No, that's that, and that, that I can that's, see it being a problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, um, we just think differently. Um, and when uh, we went to getting a brief from journalists is very different from the way I would give a brief. Um, when I brief someone, it's very open-ended. With the journalists, they come at it, they kind of come at it with the conclusion and tell you how to do it. Whereas what I want to go, what I want the designers to do is to go through the thought process, mm -hmm. and not have the answer, but to ask the questions and the design to show that. So what is the genesis for most of the ideas behind the infographics you do? I mean, I imagine you, you, you sit in on the, on the story meetings at the, at the paper. Um, but you know, tell us a little bit about how that, that initial process works. Where do you get the ideas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we, I, I'm involved in two, two conferences a day with the, with the, uh, with the newsroom. So in the, in the morning, we go through the um, page views and what's been successful overnight. And then we talk about the stories for the day. And then in the evening, we talk about, um, it's kind of the same thing, but with, a, with an emphasis on what, what's going to go overnight. And a lot of time, that's concentrating on the, on the US market. Um, but um, to answer your question, which I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> it you, was a good question. You know, you no, it, it was. Myself. It was so good. I was trying to <laughs> ram, quickly think of an where, answer. Where do the ideas come from? Okay, for yeah, a, a yeah, the answers. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm kind of primed on what the news is. So I, I, I will go back to my team and, and chat with them about it. Um, a lot of the time, the team will be brainstorming, coming up with their own ideas. And again, that's, that's another bit where I bridge in. So they'll come up with an idea, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it a peg. And then um, I'll go back to the newsroom and sell it into them. So it's, it's um, a lot of it is, is most of our stories are self-generated from within the design department. Uh, but we try and always keep it uh, news oriented. But the problem with the infographics is they take a long time to develop. So you can't just sort of sit down and 10 minutes later you've, you've bashed it out. You've, it's, there's the research, the reporting, the writing, the editing, the drawing, the creating of it, which, which all takes time. It's a, it's a physical uh, process. And it must be incredibly stressful considering that you, you have to run a website, basically. I mean, how long does it take to put together? I mean, we talked a bit about the, this fantastic coronavirus <laughs> infographic, which clearly was, it was a process over several days. But I mean, how long does it take to get something together? Well, coronavirus is, a, is, is an interesting case in point where, where uh, the sort of lessons we've learned over the last 
three, or three to six months, all came together with this one. Um, during the protests, we realized that um, it was useful to keep updating the stories. In the past, we would try and get it all finished and then loaded. With the coronavirus, um, we got in there very early on. I, I think most news organizations um, sort of thought it was a China issue, and they kind of held off a little bit until it became a really big story, whereas we had the advantage of being right on the doorstep, so we, we knew it was going to be a big story. Uh, so we started um, researching, getting it together very quickly, very early on. And that process, we got something together in about two days, wow. which is quick for us. I mean, we can do it same day um, when, if necessary, but in this case, it was about two days. Um, but then we've been adding on to it ever, ever since that. Um, but yeah, it was very useful because we've, we've recently hired um, um, a, a great new hire. She's very young, um, sort of a pretty fresh graduate, um, mainland Chinese, who's got obviously got, got that um, a, a real um, love and taste for, for the mainland, for China. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about this particular story, she immediately uh, she nailed the fact that Wuhan was the hub city that it was a uh, uh, Chinese New Year coming up and this was going to be a major issue mm -hmm. because uh, all the main, so you've got Shanghai, Beijing, Guangdong, all feeding into Wuhan. Um, and so from her, we, we knew what a big issue it was. She also had access to social, social media, so, so she was showing us stuff that was um, being shared in China, such as the food market, the, the food stores, the actual menu and the prices of the meat that was for sale in the, in the market. So that, that really enabled us to, to get ahead of the curve. See, that's fascinating. I mean, on your team, on the creative team, you really have to think like a journalist and do your yep. own reporting in a way. To, to yes, no, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the, with, uh, with our team, we, we all have different backgrounds. Um, so my background is more fine arts. I, I actually studied illustration, but uh, my first love was painting and, and sculpture. Um, then then um, Adolfo, my deputy, he's, uh, he's very much an illustration background. Um, then we have, um, we, we've just recently hired an engineer. He, he was actually at City, City, City University here um, studying um, some kind of engineering, get rich. <laughs> um, so, but he's the only one with, a, with an actual computing background. Um, so the rest of us, um, there's, there's Pablo who has, um, he's digital native, but he learned the, the coding on, on the job. Um, so yeah, we all have these different backgrounds, but the, the important thing is um, it's about journalism. It's not about the design. Design, uh, to me, is almost irrelevant. It's about telling the story. Um, design is a function. Um, yeah. Well, you know, we, we mentioned the coronavirus. Maybe if you can take us through a little bit. Um, this is um, on the screen up here. You, you saw the coronavirus uh, infographic that, that Darren was, was talking about. Um, and it starts off with this, 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 this map here. Um, and it's, it's got, you know, it's tracking the total number of cases, total number of deaths. And as you scroll down, it, it actually, you know, uh, fans out to look at the number of cases in all these different countries. Now, this is something you clearly have to update every day or several times a day. It's, that's a lot of work. It, it is. Um, it, it's, yes. Um, <laughs> but I'll let, I'll, I'll, well, because I'll, I'll, I'll let you into a little secret. <laughs> it's actually on a Google Doc that can be updated and it means it feeds straight in. Uh, wow. But, but okay. it took us a while to get to that stage. Right. So we started off with it and there were, we only had 11 cells. Um, so we could only report on by continent. And then it, it, then it got complicated with, with uh, um, like Australasia, whether which continent, Fiji and countries. Like, so it, it got very, very messy. And at that stage, I mean, we hadn't done anything like this before. So, so we didn't know how big we could go. We had the, the overnight subs were going in, adding cells, which was breaking it. So every morning we'd come in and there'd be a major kerfuffle because everything had gone wrong, it was broken. And, uh, but as you see, we've ended up with um, Wow, but it's, it's it really good. It's very clean too. If you can keep keep scrolling down a little bit more, um, you can see that you've you've added more to it. With you've got paragraphs of text here with links to stories, and then status of cases, uh, and then you've got these nice. What do you call those bar charts? What would you call these things here? 
Um, yeah, I guess they're bar charts. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> That's safe. Um, but you know, one thing that strikes me looking at, at, at this and mm -hmm. looking at some of the other infographics I've seen in, um, in the SCMP is there's, there's a, a clear sense of style. I mean, I, I look at this and I think, ah, that's one of Darren's. That's the SCMPs. <laughs> but I, mean, I'm not, I don't mean to flatter you. I, 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 I'm not, well, not no, going to flatter you, but no, it's I can't true. There does either. seem to be kind of a, um, a, a design sense there. And is that, is that deliberate? We, there is definitely an SCMP aesthetic. Um, and I think go, that partly goes back to what I was saying earlier is um, we're, we're not most of us are, are not trained in um, analytics or trained in code or, not, or, or trained in statistics. So um, for us, we, I mean, we do our own research. So we go in, we, 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 we scrape from various places to, to get the information, and then we analyze it, we look at it. But we're kind of doing it as laymen. Um, and it's difficult for us. I mean, I'm, I'm innumerate, so that makes it difficult. Um, <laughs> but the advantage to that is it means that we understand how to tell it back to the readers, because we have to understand it ourselves first. I think a lot of the times with lots of other organizations, they know what all this stuff means, and therefore they just shove the numbers out. So for us, it, it, we have to just keep um, refining it and distilling it and drilling down. Um, I mean, it's the same with the editing process uh, for writing. We just keep going and stripping it down and down and down, whether, whether that's with the bar charts or the illustrations or the numbers. It's just a matter of keep taking it till it's right down to its very essence. It's kind of very zen in a way. Well, and it's, it's also something I always yell at my students for. Is you've got to relate it to your reader. Tell the reader how it matters to them, why it should matter to them. Um, and I, you know, this, this I just love too, this little animation here. <laughs> Um, it's rather frightening, <laughs> but it is. It's, it's, it's just a fast. great way to, to really cle sh clearly show in a very simple way you know, the scale of this, of this thing and, and why it is so significant. So how, how did you create this? Is it like software you use or? Um, I would love to be able to rattle off to you a bunch of names <laughs> of really amazing, sophisticated um, software. Basically, it's a uh, pencil and paper. Seriously? And, uh, he, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I mean, most of the stuff here is in Illustrator and Photoshop. Wow. Um, and, and it is literally going back to a pencil and paper. That, that to us, is the, the essence of what we do. If you can't draw it in a sketch, it ain't working. So yeah, I mean, it is very much that. Um, we, we, do, we do use different programs. Um, but again, a lot of those we sort of learn on the job and, and um, we, we might have an idea of what we want and then we'll look up what type of program to use and, and do it that way. Um, yeah. Maybe if we can scroll down a little bit more because I, I love the drawing down here of, of the uh, people of the hospital uh, and then the people in, in the suits, the, the doctors <laughs> in the suits. Um, but it's, it's just here too, you can see this, this to me, I, I, just looking at that illustration, I think, okay, that's SCMP, that, that's Darren. Uh, who, who drew that, by the way? Um, that would be Adolfo. Adolfo, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But it's, it's, really, it's really great. And I, if we scroll down a little bit more, um, is this where the... Uh, um, yeah, oh, I, 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 love, I love this, too. The, uh, the little uh, flow chart here is, is quite interesting. This was right? one of the earlier, that was one of the earlier things. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, that, that's the other thing. As, as, we, um, as we updated it, we kept moving the stuff around so that the story um, flowed, it didn't become disjointed. Right. Um, so we kept re-nosing it every day. Um, I think the the stand first at the moment needs updating. It's a little bit, a little right. bit dated. But yeah, I mean, every time we update it, we'd have to move stuff around. I think just slightly further down here. I mean, just so much information here. Yeah. Ah, oh, here we one, go. This so one, yeah, one. Mm. this this one was done by Marcelo. Okay. Um, but again, it's the same the same idea of stripping things back to its to its essence. Um, you'll notice a lot of our stuff is black and white, mm -hmm. and that's so that there's nothing distracting. Yep. Um, yep. Then we just use the blue and the red as highlights, so it gives the information and you see it straight away. Uh, I notice with a, with a lot of other organizations, especially, um, I, I think it stands out in Asia because a lot of places in Asia like to use lots of colors, and, mm. and uh, it's, it's very quick to become overpowered. Right. And that's You're something we have to guard against SCMP as you're well. You're definitely more the less is more school yeah. of, of, of design, which yeah. I think it, it definitely shows there. 
Well, that's 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 fascinating. Um, maybe um, we can look at one more because I, I there was one on the protests that I thought was fantastic. Uh -huh. um, yeah. uh, Tina, would you mind flipping to that one? Yes, this is one of my favorite infographics. Uh, th this one was led by uh, Pablo. Okay. Um, he's uh, he's our newest arrival to Hong Kong. So for him, you know, he, he arrived in Hong Kong a couple of years ago, and during that time, he'd seen a very orderly, nice city. Uh, <laughs> as, and as it's suddenly, did. I think most of us still remember that. Yeah, and it's suddenly overnight, the whole thing just blew up, uh, which, I, which I think had a, a profound impact on him. Uh, he's from Costa Rica. Um, that doesn't really have anything to do with this, but, it, but well, it's, he has it's an outside known perspective. Known for, for you know, protests in the past, right? And, exactly. And quite yeah. a violent, um, yeah. a lot of violent incidents. Murder rates rather high there. Is it? Am I insulting anyone? I there? don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I better have a word with him. I <laughs> watch my back. Um, uh, yeah. So, so he led this, and, and um, he really owned this. But it was one of those for the for the coronavirus. We learned from this because. Initially, we wanted to do. Uh, we, we had an idea of how we want what we wanted to show, which was basically the escalating violence. Um, but we wanted to do that in a way that didn't show one or the other side using violence. It was just a, as a barometer of, of the situation. Um, but we were constantly playing catch up with the news. So every time right. we would have it almost ready, something else would happen. We have to update it. Uh, so we never quite caught up. So originally, it was going to be for the first month, then it was only three months, then um, I think we, we, we went for the first 100, 100 days. Um, so because uh, we, we figured that out on about the 80th day and figured, mm -hmm. okay, let's get ahead of the curve, and then we published it on the day. Whereas now, with, with the coronavirus, rather than waiting till we were ahead of the news, we went with it as it was happening and just updated as we went along. So this was a good learning curve, learning process. Because I, I noticed this one and the the uh, one on the um, uh, coronavirus, it, it feels like a, an infographic blog almost that is yeah. built out, and then it eventually becomes more more like a wiki than a blog. <laughs> yes. Right? I mean, I, I'm throwing yeah. around these these silly terms, but it, it really is a great reference. And I was I was curious to know, do you know whether your 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 readers are coming back again and again to the same yeah. page? The same yeah. viewers to get more information to update. Yes, um, anecdotally we know that, but also we know it from uh, from the data. We have a great analytics team at SCMP who who are um, uh, very resourceful and very committed, um, and they they log everything. So they they track how long people spend on the page, what they do, where they go to afterwards, where they came from before. Um, uh, all, all those, all those analytics we we have access to. Um, I mean, I'm I'm of the sort of school of um, lies, damn lies, and statistics. So mm. I kind of try and stay away from it a bit. But there are, you know, like, as you say, finding out that people go back to it is very useful. So yes, the, the people do use this as a resource. And I know for the with the coronavirus, because we have the um, the, the tally on the top. I know there's lots. Some people have actually got it open on their monitors all day. And just wow. keep going back and looking so at those you, you numbers. So you know a lot about, about your readers then. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. It is kind of creepy. Yeah. You don't know what I've been looking at in my browser, do well, you? Well, I'm not going to tell uh, anyone. Yeah, don't please worry. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there, there might be children watching, actually. Um, so you know, clearly, these are, these are stories that work really, really well with, with infographics. I mean, are there any types of stories that, that you feel wouldn't work with infographics? Or are you always able to find a way to tell a story with illustrations? Um, I think there is probably a way to tell every story with, info, with, with data. Um, but I think the way I sort of see it is more um, whether if you took the data out of that story, whether the, data, whether the story would still have meaning. Um, so if you look at any of, our, any of our infographics, if you were to take out the charts and graphs uh, and the visuals, would they still make sense? And um, I, I, I would hope that none of them do. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is, is, is if you can tell the story without data, there's no point in us doing it. Right, right. If, if, if the data is what makes the story and informs the story, then, then we can do it. 
Um, I know that's not a very clear answer. No, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And you know, one thing that that, that occurred to me too, and you know, I've known you for, for years and years and years, and I I know you like like I. Uh, uh, you're not a digital native. I mean, <laughs> you and I both straddle yep. that amazing tra transition from you know print only to to this world now, where we have everything online. We can you know automate this infographic mm -hmm. and track who's looking at it. Just these incredible things. But is there anything that that you long for in the days of print? Is there anything <laughs> that you you miss about it? Um, well, I'm in the I'm in the fortunate position where we still we do print at the same time. So I'm still involved with print. We do um, back pages, back page or print versions of most of these stories. Um, so we still do it. The, the thing I love with infographics with print is you've got to tell the entire story like that. Right. Someone's just got to look at it and understand it, um, and that's a real discipline because uh, it, it goes back to the editing and getting it right, distilling it to the very essence. Um, and, th and that's why it was hard for us to transition to, to digital, because we've, we've, we were still taking that same mindset to digital. So we'd have one image and be the, people would be, yeah, and so what? So we eventually learned to tell the story gradually and slowly, which is why, as you pointed out, a lot of them look like blogs and wiki programs, as a result of the fact that we're, we're sort of, in a way, overcompensating for, for where we came from. Um, so I, I don't miss it. I think the two things work really well together, and they inform one another. And I think I'm very keen to make sure that all the teams still do both, because I think if you learn from both sides. Uh, if you can do one, you can do the other, right? Or the, yeah. one makes the other better, rather. Interesting. Now, you, you mentioned earlier you had a, a, a fantastic new hire, a uh, young person from mainland China. Uh, I, I know a lot of my students are interested in design. We we have a course in in uh, magazine design and infographic design here at, at the JMSC. But when when you are looking to make a new hire for your team, what are some of the, the things that you look for? The characteristics or the skill set? <laughs> um, I, I'm just asking, you know, for a friend, not not necessarily for me, because uh, I, I don't think I, I don't have any artistic well, sense whatsoever. Right now, it's very much about digital native, um, and someone uh, we don't we don't use Python, but someone who understands Python is useful for us. People that know how to code is useful. And what, is, what does Python do? Is that something that you would use to kind of automate that Google Sheet uh, uh, yeah, that you mentioned earlier? It, yeah, it's, it, it's, like it's the language, language okay. yes. Um, um, so we, we look for people with a background in that. But uh, to me, I'm looking for someone that can problem solve and think laterally. Um, all the other skills you can learn. Um, it really, to me, it's just it's about whether someone can think unusually and, and laterally. Um, I think that's another trademark of SCMP graphics is they they, they um, we try and surprise you. So a lot of the time when we come up with an idea, we'll um, so whoever presents it. We do we do lots of team meetings and uh, uh, and discuss our ideas. A lot of the time we'll we'll reject the first idea and almost turn it around so that. It's like when I was an art student, I used to love printmaking because you'd, you'd, you'd make the print, it would be a wood block or an etching, and you'd, you'd have it there and you'd be pleased with it. Then you'd take the print and it would be the, the opposite, the reverse, the mirror right. image. Right. And to me, that's always been what I, what I kind of want to do with the graphics is, is to, to lead you off down a, down a warren, to, to, to a way of thinking that you've not thought of before. Mm. Um, yeah. you know, one of the things when you mentioned that, I, I thought of this wonderful uh, little graphic down, I can't remember where it is, but you, you look at the effect of pepper spray. <laughs> and you decide to compare the, what was, what's the word, the, um, the um, not, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? The the strength, I guess, of, of pepper spray. You compare it to chili peppers, which I thought right. was a really really fun idea. And you, you measure in Scoville units, this unit where you, mm -hmm. you measure uh, chili peppers. And um, I can't remember where it is on the screen there, but um, 
it's it's somewhere yeah, somewhere it's, there. It's further down, yeah. And I, I, I thought, well, jalapeno is what thirty or forty or several tens of Scoville units, and yeah. the pepper spray the Hong Kong police are using is several million. And um, I haven't actually been pepper sprayed yet, uh, which is good. I'm tear gassed uh, once or <laughs> twice, but you know that that really hits home. You know, for how, how powerful yeah. this stuff is, and that's rather frightening. Well, I think that's one of the useful things about having South Americans in your team. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, you're right. They, they do, they, um, it, it's about trying to find something unusual, and we do try and compare things, especially like the size of things. So there was one time uh, there was a Chinese official who'd been uh, busted, uh, they'd, they'd gone into his basement and found the amount, uh, a certain amount of money. And we figured out that if you put each, stack, each banknote on top of the other, it would be as tall as um, Times Square. So we put Times Square, the money, and blah, blah, blah. So Fantastic. yeah, it's, I mean, those are, I mean, they're kind of not cliches, but they're, they're is that the one? No, that's for lasers. Um, so yeah, it's always about making comparisons. And then, you know, when we were talking about the uh, protests, we looked at the, yeah, it's around here somewhere. Um, um, Yes, yeah, so the protests, we looked at the, how many football pitches would, would be filled, and then how big those football pitches compared to a small nation somewhere. So just, yeah, it's, it's, it's again going back to that thing that numbers in themselves are, I mean, I find numbers a real turn off. I mean, mm. if I see a big number, I, I, can, I, I glaze over and move on. But if you're able to put that number next to something and give it context, and it suddenly becomes really powerful. And again, relate it to the reader. I mean, exactly. everybody in Hong Kong knows Times Square. They can have yep. this image in their mind of that building, and they're they're wowed to think that the stack of cash rises yeah. up that, that far. Yeah. So. Well, it's been fascinating chatting with you, Darren. Um, thank you so much for coming in. We've got a lot of wine left to drink, and I, I think we yeah. better really focus on that right now. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Mm -mm. Cheers. Mm -mm. Cheers.